What's going on ladies and gentlemen, this is Stardust here, welcome to a new Marvel's Midnight Suns video here on the YouTube channel and today we have a ton of details coming from the November 16th stream that just happened, uh, Live Among Legends. Now, this stream was really great, I really enjoyed it as I've enjoyed every single stream they've done so far, I really like the detail they're going in when it comes to this game uh, and it just seems like a game that I'm going to be able to live in for a long time but we have a load of details here so I really don't want to waste any time. Uh, but but I do recommend going to watch the stream yourself. A uh, link will be in the description for that. But here is a quick rundown of everything that I thought was important to note down. Uh, the Hunter has skills of both dark and light. Dark attacks are super powerful but have a drawback. For example, the whip attack removes a card from your sort of, you know, options to go and use, right? So it's very powerful but clearly, uh, you know, gonna cost you. Next, there's an objective to protect devices. Now, this is a mission where you've got to fight enemies and you've got to, you know, repair the device and protect it until you manage to defeat all three waves and then you can go off your merry way. It does give you rewards and all that cool stuff as well. So it's good to see that there's multiple objectives and all that. It's not just going to be beat a bunch of enemies and then move on. I do like that sort of stuff. Um, you can pick and choose from dark and light branches, skill branches. There's a lot of nuance. It affects the way you talk to him. Heroes. You may have dialogue responses that come off as light and dark. It will shift to, like in balance. Now, this isn't like Dark Option is saying to Doctor Strange, you know, eat my ass or something like that. It's not going to be, you know, uh, fuck you or to Scarlet Witch or something. It's just more sort of like a um, means to an end versus just being completely honest. So, the, you know, the character will remain a good character. It just depends on how you want to look at it. Uh, mission cards. When knocking enemies out, if they have a little card above their head, you may get a card that helps with the objectives, such as protecting a device, such as, you know, giving your team a bunch of block and stuff like that. So it's definitely important to keep an eye on those enemies that will drop you some mission cards. Uh, you can acquire the legendary cards of the opposite branch of your hunter. For example, if you're really into the dark path, there is a way to get legendary cards from the other path, but they never explained how. I'm assuming it's either a story thing or just something they don't really want to touch on at the moment uh, there's objectives in the abbey and an email system called superlink where you can see posts from the heroes and a lot of that stuff is narrative it to me it looks sort of similar to the emails in uh, in gotham knights except you can't sort of you know go right i'm gonna work on that you know what i mean it's kind of similar to that or the old uh, wwe games with the season mode and you know, when you go on your phone and like a wrestler will be saying like I'll, I'll kill you bro and you know you go and fight him backstage or something uh but midnight suns also seem to be very angry at the avengers in this story the avengers sort of being more experienced than these versions of the midnight suns sort of want to take the lead but the suns are very experienced in the field so therefore both teams have friction which apparently is a story that is going to continue on uh, another little interesting thing as well is that blade has a crush on captain marvel I think it's adorable. I love it. But yeah, Blade it has got the hearts for Captain Marvel. So I think that's pretty cute. Uh, hero quests are mini quests at the Abbey. Uh, they last over a couple of days for a hero. It can be some, or, you know, it can be something really like simple as just, hey, Hunter, what do you think about A, B, and Y? And then you tell them, and then there you go. Like it's, so it can, it can kind of, you know, it can kind of vary. I'm assuming there's going to be a limit to like how much there is per hero, but it's pretty cool. Uh, coils that you collect in missions can be sent to Tony Stark and he creates new abilities for you to choose from so new cards uh, mystic artifacts that you collect can be sent to Doctor Strange and it'll unlock a new research level, resources and fields of study. To unlock an artifact for a specific hero, you need to do certain things with that hero. So for example, if you want something with Blade, you have to do three levels with Blade, you have to sort of, you know, work a bit alongside Blade to get that, but it does help him along with combat. Uh, if you craft an item bench, it allows you to craft great cards. And I wrote it literally, so in my notes, I put great cards and stuff. There is no stuff. It's great cards and, and uh, all that, you know, good combat 
cards, right? Very sort of similar to potions. Uh, every single ability in the game can be upgraded and modified. The collars that you see on the hunter add a passive ability to the hunter. Uh, can be anything, but you do get legendary ones uh, in the future. There was a mission that we saw. Capture the Hydra ob agent objectives. You've got to take Dr. Faustus. Faustus, I think that's his name. It sort of sounds like Faustus the beer, uh, but yeah. Uh, you can earn overkill, uh, this is something you may see in some of the games, but you can earn overkill by doing more damage than needed. You can build a certain upgrade in the abbey to overkill certain enemies to then interrogate them. If you spend a card to interrogate enemies, you earn rewards. So if you want to unlock that and get more rewards, I'm sure there's ability to farm them. I would imagine that if the enemies do not scale, you could go, I, I believe they do though, but just in case they don't, you could probably go to a really old level and just farm some really weak enemies. Um, then there was a question said are there any upgraded weapons or cosmetics so essentially you know if you change up the weapons do they have different stats uh, the weapons come from hunter suits and they are cosmetic but you can swap out different weapons from different suits and the suits do have their own sort of abilities uh, we've got another look at crossbones crossbones in this game isn't fallen he's just serving hydra i like that i like the fact that we are going to have some villains that aren't just going to be taken over by lilith uh, but they are going to be working alongside hydra now I know people would be maybe a little bit concerned because it sounds very much like an AIM takeover in Marvel's Avengers, but this is kind of a different thing because we are in the story with Hydra and Lilith, the Mother of Demons. You know, we haven't sort of been doing this for like two years, right? Uh, people ask what Gloss was. Now, Gloss is a cosmetic reward. It's an in-game reward. You can buy palettes to recolor suits. If you want to turn a photo into a painting, change your hair, add makeup, or change your outfit, then use Gloss. You can even buy you can even buy gifts for other heroes using Gloss, which is really cool. Uh, another cool little thing is Garth makes a joke about Moon Knight. Now, we've heard a lot of teases about Moon Knight, so it's very clear he's coming to the game. I think it's kind of it's kind of obvious, do you know what I mean? But regardless, I'm, I'm going to try and uh, I'm going to try and just put that as a joke for now. But, uh, you know, all I'm saying is, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, then another thing is you can customize the other heroes. You can add palettes to recolor their suits, but they have a ton of skins as well. And they did confirm that there is a marketplace. So you will be able to purchase skins from a marketplace, which I, I've got to be honest, cool. You know what I mean? Make your money. Uh, Revenants, uh, then they go into a mission and they talk about Revenants. So Revenants are a dangerous enemy type. They link their souls with other enemies, which means they cannot be knocked out until they are both knocked out because they'll keep sharing health, reviving each other, and all that good stuff. Good besties. Um, combat items work like this. So I was talking about them a bit earlier, but they are free to use. Use them anytime and they're great. The thing about them is you should use them akin to potions, like I mentioned earlier. Once you use one of them, they're gone, right? Uh, if you don't have here, like, so if you have heroes that you do not use, there is a minimal level cap. So there's an under two level cap compared to your hunter. Leveling is quite a small part, so they will always be pretty viable if you, you know, you sort of work with those heroes. So if you want to use cap out of nowhere, at least get him sort of ready for the mission ahead, right? Uh, they said Scarlet Witch was always intended to be a big part of the story, despite the MCU. I believe that. I do. Uh, it's much easier to do all the trophies slash achievements for multiple playthroughs. So I imagine there's probably going to be a trophy when it comes to uh, leveling up all your friendships. Uh, if that's the case, then yes, it will indeed take multiple playthroughs, which is more 70 hours plus. So you'll be playing this game for a very long time if you're a completionist. Um, some missions only allow one hero or two heroes but it's usually three but some heroes do have an ability i don't know which ones he didn't explain it but do have an ability to change to four or maybe even five but five is really difficult and they gave a very sort of you know a very bog standard answer for the reason of you know three sort of isn't 
a clusterfuck, basically, right? Not in their words, but in mine. Uh, that's sort of how I, I how I sort of interpreted what they said. Um, then they were fighting a monster called the Nest Mother, and the Nest Mother is a general for Lilith, the mother of demons. She can raise these monuments, uh, these little glowy green things, and every time one of them is raised, it has a passive effect. So maybe heals the enemies, maybe does this, maybe does that. And if too many of them get raised, then you're gonna have a bad time right uh very cute little thing you can join like clubs in the abbey sort of akin to after school clubs and by doing that you will actually unlock t-shirts um every night in the abbey you can visit agatha and read special books and interact with the cauldron supernatural law is around the abbey to collect and explore um you know it's uh it's you know it's it's cute i th- i like it i like that a lot that the abbey is open to go and look at supernatural law to go and sort of you know collect bits and pieces of the hunter's past agatha you know a wanda etc etc uh cool puzzles around the abbey let us you open more areas to explore caretaker and agatha and the hunter and wanda have a very special relationship in this game and it wraps up into the mystery of the story uh and then they uh, ended it there and went on to the ghost rider prequel short that you may have watched already but if you haven't i do recommend them because they're really cool so there you go ladies and gentlemen that is all the notes coming from the most recent marvel's midnight sun stream if you're new here be sure to subscribe like and comment down below be sure to watch the stream yourself if you haven't already just so you can get a visual demonstration because let me tell you this video would not be out in the next week if i had to do that myself a bit and peace